and welcome back. Today I'm going to turn my attention to the power supply. First I've got to remove all these grubby coverings including the sticky back plastic that covers the power supply shelf. Once that's out of the way just a matter of removing the two screws on the top and the shelf simply pops out. I'll give that a good clean up, ready for the reinstall. Now undo the four screws under the base, remembering to put them safely away for later. They go into my little jar. Move this cable retainer out of the way. The power supply slides upwards and out towards you. More plastic to remove to give us access to all the screws underneath and it's a matter of removing all of these screws on the top and on the side. Then lift up the edge of the power supply at the back, tip it towards you and pull the cables out. The whole thing slips to the right on two little grooves and pops off. Give it a nice thorough clean. You don't want to work in all that dust. The fan cable is simply unclipped from the board. And I'll attach these to the new fan cable from the new power supply. Now we unscrew all the screws holding the motherboard onto the base. The input power cables are blue and brown. We need to clip these as close to the motherboard as we possibly can to give us plenty to play with later. Give it a good old clean out and also clean the plastic insulation sheet. I need to knock this out and this is fine, they won't be in the way. There's plenty of room for the new power supply which is a builder I bought from eBay. 600 watts, should be plenty of power for the ATX motherboard. I won't need the bits in the bag. First of all, remove all the screws from the top. There are four, one on each corner. I'm going to remove the fan shield as well. This fan shield will come in very handy for another job I've got in mind. The top lifts off and then we unclip the fan from the motherboard. I use that cable to connect to the other two cables on the old Apple power supply case. Push this cable clip out of the way, throw it to one side, we don't need that. And now we need to remove the transformer. There are four screws on the side holding it in place. Then remove all the screws holding the power supply motherboard to the base. In this case there's four. Clip the cables as close to the power supply input as you can. These cables on this one are white and black. Now I position the power supply in the right place, giving me plenty of space either side and room to connect the cables at both ends. I 
I need the transformer to attach to the side of the case. I use the case from the new power supply as a template and draw through the holes, marking the spots. Then it's just a matter of drilling the holes through. Tap this raised little rod right through the base and out the other side. I also drilled three holes in the base to add these motherboard spaces. And on the right hand side, I cover the raised section with insulation tape. As you can see, I screwed those motherboard raises in from the bottom. Now I reattach the new power supply to the motherboard spaces. And attaching the transformer to the side made it secure enough once the four screws were used. The cables on the left from the fans will be attached to the new fan cable so I can clip it to the motherboard and the black cable is positive so that connects to the brown cable of the power supply input and the white cable to the blue neutral. I'll solder them together and insulate them for safety. Here you see it, the whole job finished. Now it's just a case of positioning my PC cables where I want them for the outlet holes of the power supply case. Then just screw the case back together and it's all ready to go. I tested it with one of my mining rigs and everything worked fine including the fans. I'm so pleased I kept this case. I really like the fact that it slots in place with that power supply input into the G5 case. Now let's have some fun with some fans. Do you remember those old boat propellers I pulled out? Well it's time to change them up for something nicer. First of all, I've got to work out where we're going to put everything. I attach my graphics card to the motherboard. Then I fit them both in place. And this way I could work out if anything would be in the way when I tried to reinstall the fan housing. In fact, the audio in out was the only thing that was too high to put it back in. So I marked it off with a marker. and dremeled it out with my dremel tool. Now, as you can see, there's the notch and the fan fits in and doesn't even get in the way. I made sure the logos of the fans were facing in the right direction as that's the direction the air goes in. Fitted them to the fan housing and screw them into place. I've also installed a pair of brand new fans to the rear fan housing. These fans are nice and quiet and efficient and take a lot less energy than the old propellers. With the logos in the same direction to ensure airflow goes right through the computer and over the CPU cooler. I got these nice clear 80mm fans for the fan housings for the top shelf. As you can see I've already installed them so the airflow will go over the hard drives. I think they look great. Once again no LEDs because you won't be able to see them inside the case. Here's how the fans look attached to the middle shelf. As you can see I've added the air duct. In the middle of that will be the CPU cooler. Next week I'm going to tackle the rebuild. So I'll be installing the motherboard, the graphics card, the shelves, the power supply and everything else. If you enjoyed this show please hit the like button and if you'd like to see more why not hit the subscribe button and the little bell and you'll get notifications when the next video is ready. Thanks for watching.